All right, so I guess this is a more in-depth thing of the uh, the spatial query API or the new uh, technology they added. I mean, it's not new, but like you know, I'm it's new to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it says these are the three new functions. So they have world root, which is workspace, uh, get parts and bounds, or get parts and box. Um, with this one, that's the one I just showed you, where like you put the C frame in the size of your box, and then it gets the part. Uh, the, it returns a table with the parts inside of it. All right. So yeah, as you can see, it says uh, returns a table with all base parts whose bounds boxes overlap. The giving box at a C frame and size. Uh, and size that C frame. I, I've never. Oh, oh, sorry. Size. Okay. So C frame is not the center of the box, and orientation is C frame. Uh, uh, so C frame is for the uh, center of the box. And the orientation is taking its own count. So yeah, unlike the other one that we, where we had, like I think it was like what was it, um, the hitbox where we had to do the we had to like put the points and we had to set it like that, and then we get the table. Yeah, unlike that one, I forgot what it was called, but yeah, region three. Unlike region three, we can actually you know if the secret, which is this is much better honestly. This is, this is blessed. All right, so yeah, then we also have um, objects. So the, we also have objects world root get parts in bounds in radius, which I guess this. You put the position of the um the center point right or the your target point and then you put the radius so basically how far you want it to get the parts and then it returns oh you can also put the uh, the parameters i don't know what those parameters are yet i guess we're gonna get to that in this video so yeah so you put the radius and you put the part and it returns all the parts that are, that's in radius of that um point i guess so this is this is i guess this could be like an alternative way of doing a much quicker way actually of doing the uh the you know dot magnitude thingy I don't know. The thing, my only question is that would looping these like cause lag? Because like these these seem really useful, and I would it would be even more useful if you, could, if you just loop them. Like for, make, for example, if you want to make MTCs and stuff like that, you could like loop all the parts that are inside of a you know inside of a specific radius, and if a player is close to that NPC, you could just you know start following them or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, it says retains a table of all base parts whose bound boxes overlap, and given uh, at the given sphere. Okay, so this is, does it in the sphere. Okay, given sphere at, at the position and radius. Okay, that's interesting. So now you have the final one, one is get parts in part. In this case, if you want to make your own actual hitbox, like your own manual hitbox, instead of doing all the, like, you know, uh, you know, just coming up with the size and C-frame, you can, like, you can still do the old, like, you make a hitbox, you weld it to the player, and then you can just use this part instead of using parts.touched or part.touch. You can use this part instead. So you can do world root, get parts in part, and then you put the part instance, which would be your hitbox, I guess. And then the overlap parameters. Uh, uh, yeah, that one. I guess this this you can probably do like some whitelisting and blacklisting with this. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, it says returns a table of all base parts who's uh, who overlap. All base parts. Um, uh, so yeah, who overlap the given part? The given part must be present in the same wor world model workspace as the parts you want to query. Can collide and can touched on the on the given parts are not considered. Uh, just the parts uh, geometry okay so yes in this one you can literally have can collide off or can touch off or whatever and it's not going to affect it in any way shape or form which is good honestly but yeah so um yeah let's jump i think we're going to jump straight into over that param so it says a key thing to note with these uh is that the box and results overlap queries uh, the box sorry the box and the box and the radius overlap queries uh will only check against part bounding boxes uh, the blue box shown when you select a part okay so basically if i were to open the studio right now give me one second it's saying that what it's saying is that basically like this only queries all parts that are within this blue box see so oh my god if i were if i were to use that um that method get or uh, get parts in part I think so it only gets all the parts that you see how when I select it, it has a little blue box so I guess that so for example if I were to do a sphere right for instance it gets everything that's inside the blue box not just the actual sphere so if anything was like slightly outside the sphere it would get everything that's inside the blue selection box that's what it's trying to say right. so yeah so saying um, the blue box shown when you select the part. This makes them pretty fast to use. The part overlaps query uh, will do a full geometry collision check. So it's more accurate. Nice. Maybe they might, uh, you know, 
I don't know if this I don't know if this line means that it will try to check. So if you were using a spear, for instance, maybe you might just get the only get might just get the geometry instead of just the um the selection. But either way, it would be nice. It says later on we may add more uh, overlap queries with new geometry and varying levels of detail. Nice, nice, nice. So now we're hopping straight into overlap params. It said, "What is it? What is the? What is this extra overlap params parameter? It's a new parameter object uh, with a set of properties used to define the rules uh, for the overlap query to follow. It works like recast params. Yeah, anyway, so you can do like blacklist, whitelist, and etc. Um, even shares many of the same properties. So yeah, so objects we have the filter descendant instances, which is an array of objects whose descendants will be used in filtering. So yeah, then we have recast filter type." Uh, filter type which we recast that filter type which you can have whitelist yeah like, like I was saying earlier so whitelist blacklist and it determines how the filter descendants is used blacklist will skip the filter descendants instances while whitelist will exclusively include them so yeah so the filter def the filter descendant instances are the part as like the uh the parts which you want to operate on and then when you get to the the filter type and you have whitelist it's going to look it's going to only look for the parts that are inside of the filter descendant instances but if you do blacklist it's going to ignore all the parts that are inside the filter descendant instances so that's that's good um then we have max parts basically the maximum amount of parts that you want to query at a time so yeah this is like this is really similar to um the properties in um region three so yeah and then we also have collision group uh, equals default. The collision group, uh, the region check is performed on. Okay, so default would be like everything, I'm assuming. I need to get more into collision, group, collision groups because I don't know that much about it. But yeah, so I guess if you had like a player collision group, which is only in like only include players, you can only check for those, all those parts that are inside of that collision group, if that makes sense. So yeah, so out with the O, yeah. Honestly, find parts in region. Region 3 was so terrible. Oh my goodness. Like it was like it was so annoying. I, so yeah, yeah. Additionally, um, guessing parts can be used in place of, yep. So you can use this new function instead of um, part get touching parts, and it's a better choice most of the time. However, a few cases are prevent us from deprecating touch. Uh, okay, 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 that's cool. Yeah, I mean, also you might as well just leave it in because people might still use that, and then you deprecating it and removing it might just mess up people's games. So just leaving it at a new one is, I think that's cool unless it's like. I don't know. I don't know anything about the. Let me just shut up. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically um everything regarding the um overlap params. If you want to see a video of me actually using all of these three functions, I already used one of them in the other video. But if you want to see a video of me using all of these, let me know down below in the comment section. This video is also for me and my friends too, which are trying to learn how to code or program a script or whatever. So that's why I make these a lot. Um, I do have a gaming video coming in. Uh, some of you guys are. Tired, getting tired of seeing these scripting videos so i have i have some videos i got a new graphics card so <laughs> i can make videos much quicker as you can probably see by the way i'm uploading but yeah um leave a like below leave a like and comment down below if this helped you and subscribe and stay safe y'all